be able to hear from Mike, you know, so Corey and Lauren got back to the apartment and Lauren was, you know, drunk and high, but like conscious and talking to me and, and, you know, walked in on her own power or Corey walked in with Lauren, slugged over his shoulder, dropped her and was like, here she is. I would love to know, you know, what kind of the circumstance was there. But anyway, Corey is also kind of a mess at this point. Uh, He's drunk. He's drunk and probably on a lot of drugs. At least some. At least some. Uh, Corey, you know, once he gets Lauren into the house, kind of tries to go upstairs. I think it was a townhouse Mm -hmm. that they lived in, so their their rooms were upstairs. Tries to go up the stairs and just throws up all over the stairs. And Mike is like, all right, dude. Party foul. Come on, man, dude. Really? Um, And helps him up the stairs and cleans up after him, at which point he comes back down and really notices, you know, Lauren's in really bad shape. Mm. And so he tries to convince her to stay over at their place, you know, basically, like, sleep it off. Lauren reportedly said no, she wanted to go home. Actually, she wanted to find her cell phone. The reports aren't her saying that she wanted to go home. And it may be that, you know, once they... The reason that she didn't just walk into her apartment was because she realized her cell phone was missing and she wanted to find it. That's certainly possible. They went in the wrong direction, though. They went way in the wrong direction. But um, she she said, no, she wanted to go find her cell phone. And Mike says that he decided that he didn't really know Lauren very well, which is kind of true, I guess. But that Jay, his neighbor, knew her way better. So he would, um, again, in the words of the lawyers... Make or Jay's problem, unquote. Mm-hmm. Nice guys. Uh, I think um, that's, uh, you know, it's kind of understandable. Yeah. I- I've been there. So <laughs> Mike walks next door, two do- doors down, and wakes Jay up and says, Come, you know, Lauren's over here. Can you, like, take care of her? And Jay goes over and you know, gets Lauren and brings her back to his house. And basically, again, just like Mike says, he tried to get her to stay over, just, you know, sleep it off totally innocent and she said again no she wanted to go find her cell phone so that i mean so he kind of just says all right fine Um, well he did make he did try and figure out you know if she was just going to fall over because he said listen if you can walk to the end of the block while i'm watching you and not stumble Mm -hmm. then you can go but if i see you stumble i'm gonna bring you back i mean that seems to be what his intention was and he probably fully expected her to stumble on the first step yeah so actually at 4.15 a.m., this is the last official recorded sighting of her, um, Jay lets Lauren use his cell phone to place two calls. Again, that's what Jay says, but um, to two of her records, friends. Two phone records probably do confirm it, though, right? Well, they confirm that two calls were made to two of his other male friends at that time, whether with Lauren or not. You know, who knows? Yeah. Because that plays in a little bit to some of the theories later on. But uh, one of them was, you know, David Moon, which was a, a different male friend. It's not David Rowan, the guy she no. first went there with? No. David Moon? Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of Davids in Bloomington, oh, apparently. Okay. Uh, David's a popular name for my generation. There's a lot of Davids. I, I know I said that like you should know who that is. I, you don't. It's fine. He, this is the only time he comes into the story, really. But I, I had um, heard that the other call was to David Rowan. I, it, it may have been. Yeah. Either way, two male friends that were in that circle, um, neither of them answered. And so Jay said, all right, you know, like Steve said, if you can walk to the end of the block, fine. And he watched from his little balcony area, which wasn't, re- it's not really a balcony. It's more of a stoop, isn't it? Yeah, but it's op- It's like on the second story. <laughs> Oh, it's one of those little halvesy. Okay, I know mm-hmm. what you're talking about. Those little itty bitty balcony. Yeah, where you can kind of just step outside. You can put a flower it. pot on it I, and nothing else. Even, no, mm-hmm. I think it's literally just like the the width of a foot. <laughs> yeah, the teeny tiny flower pot. Sure. Yeah, maybe a tiny one. Um, so he says that he watched her get quote almost unquote to the corner and then turn around and went inside. And that's the last time anybody's ever seen Lauren mm. ever. So real feel good story. Um, this case, they always are. This yeah. case did garner national attention. News networks like CNN and Fox were picking the story up like immediately. And since 2011, those stories, you can find all that footage online, um, or at least a lot of it. Yeah. Okay, the ABC, original reporting. Did ABC do like an hour-long special just a yeah, couple of years ago? Yeah, 2020. Yeah. 2020, yeah. yeah. Just a few years um, ago. To this day, literally no additional clues have been found. And again, like I said, one of the big uh, issues that people take with this case 
is the um, lack of CCTV footage. There was another case that was kind of similar to this. Is a you know girl disappeared in a college city after you know walking, and the police department there released literally all of the footage, and that ended up actually yes leading to somebody remembering seeing this guy interacting with her, and they found the guy, and then found this girl's remains. And well, and they were able to knew. track the guy on tape. Right. That's how they figured it out. Yeah. Right. But you know, somebody said, "Oh, yeah, I saw that guy," which they didn't have on tape was the interaction between them two. But they were able to track him and then, you know, figure out who he is. And so everybody's hoping that would happen again if the tapes were released. or something would happen. You know, and um, unfortunately, they haven't done that. They've just released two kind of little snippets, and that's pretty much it. There you go. Mm, frustrating. Yeah. So that's the story. Do you guys have anything to add to the story? Hmm, what do you think? What do you think? No, I mean, we're probably going to talk about this in theories, but it's just, there's a whole lot of questionable judgment through oh, this yeah. entire story. Yeah. And it is... That's called college, dude. I was yeah. about yeah. to say, it's all based in, in 20-somethings, yeah. early 20-somethings, consuming a lot of intoxicants and making some weird, not-so-smart decisions. Because I remember some of the things that I did, and... Years later, I look back and I'm like, oh, how oh. did you not die, you idiot? Well, yeah. I'm thinking, you I'm so lucky. glad I didn't get caught. Yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah, so we will talk about that in the theories. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay, well, actually, then I guess we're at theories. But before we go, let's take a break. I have a cat named Ginger, also known as the Rickety Princess. She is an adorable little Himalayan who falls over a lot. She is super, super cute and so cuddly and it's unbearable. Unfortunately, she also has a habit of announcing that it's time to eat at around 3.30 a.m. by singing the song of her people. Chewing her away only gains about a half hour of peace before she announces it again. So you long day at the office with serious lack of sleep going on to sit down and plan a meal. Thankfully, we have HelloFresh to help out on those more zombie-like days. HelloFresh is currently offering customers uh, the classic box, a veggie box, and a family box. HelloFresh is the meal delivery service that makes cooking more fun so you can focus on the whole experience and not just the plate. And each week, HelloFresh creates new delicious recipes with step-by-step -step instructions designed to take about 30 minutes for everyone from novices to seasoned home cooks short on time. HelloFresh delivers food to your doorstep in a recyclable, insulated box, and it's all for less than $10 a meal. Because HelloFresh has delicious ingredients which you'll love to eat, and simple recipes you'll love to cook. So get cooking. I'll tell you, I've used HelloFresh. I've enjoyed it. It's helped me out immensely. And if you want to try HelloFresh, you can go to their website and use the promo code SIDEWAYS30. That's SIDEWAYS30 to get $30 off your first week of deliveries. So go to HelloFresh.com and enter SIDEWAYS30 when you subscribe. Because it's great for those days when your fuzzy wonder, or just the world, make it a little hard to sit down and... Uh, plan a meal from scratch. And we're back. First theory. I'm, okay. Uh, I'm actually doing it in sections. I'm sorry. Okay. Sections? What do you mean? Uh, foul You've never play, done this to foul us. Foul play and not foul play. Ah. So let's start with theory number one, foul play. Theory number one, A. The <laughs> Sons of Silence. Uh huh. You mean the sounds of silence, the Simon and Garfunkel song? No, the sounds of silence, <laughs> the Notorious biker game? game. Oh, those guys. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There was a 2020 segment on Lauren uh, a few years ago, and they tracked down this guy who had been a member of the Sons of Silence. The Sons of Silence, for those of you who do not know, are what is known as a one percent group of motorcyclists, which means they're an outlaw motorcycle gang, and so that comes from the American Motorcycle Association. Yeah. Who the the president made a statement once where he said 99% of motorcyclists are law-abiding, like great citizens, 
and so the the one percent that are not like that took to heart that mm -hmm. they are the one percent, and so they so actually wear patches. That say one percent. This on is them. what I hear. I know. Not, yeah, they're very proud of it. Not to be confused with the one percent that people were protesting a couple yeah. of years ago. Not not the that's same. a different one percent of non-law yes. abiding citizens. I've met yeah. a lot of people, a lot of bikers who not who are not even in the one percent probably still wear that patch just because it's kind of badass. I've I have heard that that is a very bad idea. Uh, yeah. Oh really? Oh, in that culture, you you don't pose. Uh, there is no point. posing because you will get it handed to you. So the Sons of Silence are like a real legit outlaw bike gang. And, you know, they have kind of factions everywhere. And one of them... Chapters. Have, chapters, excuse me. They have chapters everywhere. And we do not want them to come after us. It's happens chapters. to be in Bloomington, Indiana or thereabouts. And a, there was a tip given to the investigators in the case that a guy who used to be what they call a cleaner for the Sons of Silence, which is... Um, Harvey Keitel. Yeah. Yeah. I don't feel like I need to explain it. Um, no. <laughs> uh, I, didn't, I didn't know that those guys cleaned up after themselves. He cleans up after them. Oh. Basically, there was some speculation that he had, for whatever reason, killed Lauren mm -hmm. and buried the body on his farm. Uh, well, it turns out that that tip actually came from his very annoyed ex-wife <laughs> and was totally unsubstantiated. Um, so, in short, this theory is bad and you should feel bad. Mm, yeah, I saw I saw a little footage on 2020. They, uh, Ryan Ross, Ross went to his house and the guy's like, from, said, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't even know the broad. And it's then actually, shut the door. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, if you, if you watch the whole thing, it's actually very interesting. I kind of feel bad for the guy because he seemed like he was very willing to talk, but... He had stipulated without cameras, uh -huh. and they showed up with cameras, and he was like, I don't want to talk on camera. Turn the camera off, and I'm happy to talk to you guys about everything that I may or may not know about this case. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, not in like a shady, like, well, I might know something. Like, uh, I literally well, don't know anything, but like, I'm happy to talk to you guys about, you know, because he's an ex member of this gang and yeah. so he was you know it seemed like he was willing to say like well i'm happy to talk to you guys about the activity i knew about around that time to see if any of it coincides. they they booked the appointment under semi-false pretenses with him yeah they did they tried to to ambush him they and did he was having none of it and he was like yeah. i told you no cameras and they were like uh and they're just got in his face with the cameras and he was like Okay, bye. And close the door and told them to get off the property. Yeah, the same episode, they uh, tried to ambush Corey also. And, uh, they tried to same, ambush a lot of people. Yeah, same results. Yeah, they apparently are not very good at setting up stings, is what this, this tells me about the crew of 2020. So, so who else we have besides the deadly bikers? Yeah, um, well, there's the people do think maybe the boyfriend did it. Jesse. Jesse, Jesse Wolf. Um, he was actually considered a serious point of, or person of interest for a while. Just the first parts of... Of the in the beginning. Well, it's always the boyfriend. Yeah. Well, the husband or the boyfriend sense. or the wife or the girlfriend, you know. Uh, uh, see, but he had he had roommates in his, in his, in his yeah, place. Yeah, there, right? there was no evidence to back this up. It was just people saying, like, well, you know, it was the jealous boyfriend who did it. And I think there are some people on the internet who falsely perpetuate that, continue mm. to falsely per per perpetuate that. But I think that's a really bad theory, and it really is just making somebody who's already suffering suffer yeah. more. Although, it, you know, there is that question again. This is one of those things that doesn't really make a lot of sense because he stayed home while she's out drinking with a bunch of with other guys and stuff. Joe. And so that's a little weird. Joe, yeah. have you ever heard of the friend zone? Yeah. She may have had the couple of guys that she was hanging out with. They were in the friend zone and they mm. were trying to, you know, make their impression and make their mark and so they always went out with her. Yeah. But she was like, yeah, no, I'm not. No, that's never happening. They're just here's they're another just fun idea. People. You can just be friends with people. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, it's yeah, a friend yeah. zone. Like she it's thought a, no, they were not friends. not even a friend zone. Like everybody can just be friends with everybody else, and there doesn't have to be sexual tension or like underlying romance or anything. Yeah, but you're not thing. a man. You don't understand how this it works. Is a dudes thing. constantly are like, hmm, yeah, wonder. Exactly. in college, it's a dudes thing. are constantly and like especially that, especially when there's a lot of booze involved. Yeah, there's. there's I'm afraid you, know, you guys will take advantage. Yes. All right. So, so, <laughs> this has been a fun discussion. So, uh, but leaving the boyfriend out of the whole thing, I mean, he could have done it. I mean, there's people with all sorts of theories out there. Like, for example, he was supposedly texting her at, at the bar and stuff over the course of the evening. Could have had somebody else do the texting while he went out and stalked her and observed her with these guys and then eventually, you know, bushwhacked her and killed her out of jealousy. I think it's a bad theory. Oh, yeah, it is. But I just want to say, you know, it's, it's 
you know, yeah, anything's possible. I uh, yeah. I think I think the Sons of Silence did it before I think Jesse did it. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't do not think the Sons of Silence did it. So probably not. Um. So the next two theories are you know still foul play. Um. The not boyfriend theories. Uh. There is one thing that I didn't mention, and that is the surveillance footage that was released. Uh, there are only two little bits. Mm-hmm. One of them is just a picture of Lauren leaving for the night from her apartment. You see her from behind. No, you see her from the front. When she was... Oh, wait. I thought you meant when she was leaving the apartment at four in the morning. No. no. She's oh, leaving, they haven't released that one. Okay. No. I'm, no. Getting, I'm getting it Mm-mm. mixed up. It's okay. the beginning of the night. She's kind of smiling. She's got a white polo shirt on and some black pants. And I don't know why. I guess, like, so that people could know what she had looked like on that night. I don't know. I think that was a bad idea, but whatever. And then the other thing that they have released is, um, it's actual video footage of a white truck. Pickup truck. It's a white pickup truck. And the reason that this interested them, interested them, was two reasons. One, they thought it would actually be identifiable because it does look like there's some lettering on the side, though you can't see it in any of the footage. It's not clear. Mm Mm-hmm. But uh, the real reason that they're interested is that you see Lauren walking down the street and you see the truck go by and then it circles the block and comes back around and passes again. And they think it would be pretty easy, particularly given Lauren's size and current state, to just quickly grab her and throw her in your truck and go off. Sure. And now um, this, uh, this took place at what time? When, was this after she left... 4.30. Yeah, like Jay 4:30. Rosenbaum. It was so 4.30 in the point, morning, yeah. That's when it was like, yeah. yeah. And then I know they tracked down the owner. He had kind of a weak excuse, I thought. Can you remind me of what you thought I don't remember was? ever hearing that they tracked down I the owner. I don't remember that either, so I'm just wondering. No, what I read is they, 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 they actually found the owner. I don't know exactly how they did it. Maybe he recognized his own truck and came forward or what. Turns out he, he has like a construction company or something, and he was he was trying to find one of his employees and hmm. picking him up for some reason. Hmm. So that was a little strange at that time of the night. I mean, maybe he had a problem employee who got in trouble with things like drinking or something like that. Or if know. he owned or a construction he, uh, firm, that's when they start sometimes. Maybe it was, yeah, his morning. Yeah, maybe yeah. I mean, it's, it's June. Yeah. It's light early. And, and it's, it's going to be hot. That's true. Good point. So maybe that was it. Maybe he wasn't up late. Maybe he was up early. Maybe, yeah, maybe Listen, I, there are guys that, I live in a blue-collar neighborhood, and there are guys that come and pick up other workers or you know co-workers in the area and they're there super crazy early in the morning oh uh-huh. yeah. yeah especially this time of the year yeah. yeah yeah so it's i mean it's it's possible that that was the resolution to that white truck thing. that's what i heard it's yeah. possible that it that wasn't actually the white truck but that, that person was like i don't know i was kind of in that area at that time and i have a white truck and i was circling the block so yeah maybe he thought um, yeah I mean, you know, I would. If I thought I might have been in that neighborhood and might have been on that camera, I would have probably gone to the police and said, listen, I can't tell you exactly what moment I was driving around what block. I can't tell you, you know, I don't know where that surveillance camera was. Here's what my truck looks like. Here's what I was doing. Here are the people who can corroborate it. Mm -hmm. But the reason that that white truck, it kind of brings up this theory of foul play that crime of opportunity a crime of opportunity right that somebody could have just been prowling for a victim for whatever kind of crime they wanted to commit whatever kind of probably horrific crime they wanted to commit and that lauren again given her size and state would have been a really really good oh yeah she would have put up very little struggle and overall would have been super easy to abduct and you know do whatever you wanted to do with it and then uh, with her? Yeah, with with her, and then uh, you know, get rid of Bobby, however you wanted, and wherever you wanted, and it'd be pretty hard to track. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. The next foul play theory is Corey. Yeah. That Corey killed her. Mister, I hurt on the stairs. Yeah. There are a couple theories here. It's possibly uh, Corey drugged Lauren, hoping to get lucky in yeah. like the illegal way. Yeah, so he roofied her in the bar, I guess. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I should point out that we didn't originate that theory. It's out there on the internet. Yeah, no, right? none yeah. of this is original. To oh, us. yeah, no. Never Maybe is. Maybe Corey got mad at Lauren for spurning his advances and hit her. Really, the thing about Corey is that really no matter how you cut it, there's he probably does at least have 
a part ownership of her disappearance. Yeah. Not that's not to say that she should have been responsible for her own damn actions, but it does seem like he was continuing to encourage her to continue to be intoxicated. And, and then out. and then when he was supposed to be taking care of her, whether he was fit to or not, didn't really escalate. I mean, you know, if somebody falls over and hits their head as hard as it sounds like she did, you don't just drag I mean, you know, you shouldn't just take her somewhere and like let her sleep. Like don't <laughs> Probably. Even if you're like super, super drunk, I mean, it, you know, again, it comes down to that bad judgment that we were talking about earlier. Um, but I would say I feel a little weird about saying.